Hello everyone out there in the land of YouTube. This is Annette Dion. I am the host and founder of the Psychic News Network. And if you're here regularly, you already know that. Today is um, Friday, September 9th. Yeah, that's right. 2022. And when we last left our story, the world was a different place than it is today. Because as we all are well aware, the Queen of England has passed away. And even though we know she was 96 and that it was, I had predicted on several occasions that she wasn't going to hang around for too much longer after Philip passed. Um, I feel like she went the way that, you know, we're all going to go that way someday, right? She went in, in, a, in a really beautiful way. And as much as people are, you know, kind of, you never prepared for that kind of thing, right? Uh, as much as people knew that day was coming, it's still very, very sad. And it still is a shift in the collective consciousness, which always fascinates me how when big events happen, even though we knew she was going to pass because she was 96 at some point, you know, we knew it was going to happen and it was imminent and it was coming. Although it was kind of sudden because we... We heard she wasn't feeling well, and then, like I posted on my community page, I ordered a sandwich, I took a walk to the store to get it, and then I came back, and she was she was alive when I took the walk, the short walk. By the time I took the short walk back, she had passed away. So, we're never really ready for that kind of thing, but collectively, I remember when Lady Di passed away, and that was different and really shocking. We didn't expect that at all. And it, it was, you could feel the collective energy of grief. And we all feel the collective energy of sadness that's happening now. And everybody uh, that I know, myself included, obviously, have only known Queen Elizabeth. So I know that there are some people that comment about the monarchies and what destruction they caused and you know the Queen Elizabeth was born into that role and she she played that role of being the Queen with as a public servant with dignity with prowess with wit with uh, you know graciousness glamour I think it's amazing to see the the pomp and circumstance. I think it, it's actually inspiring to us. It's a reason that they built, you know, back in the day, huge cathedrals to just kind of give us an, an uplifted sort of perspective or experience. So I know that there are people that are saying, of course, oh, but what about this with the monarch monarchy's done? And what about that? I really feel like that's kind of missing the point or changing the subject. That's my personal feeling. And uh, today I was thinking about on SNL, if y'all remember Debbie Downer. We don't really need to be Debbie Downers right now. There's, there's too much going on. There are too many massive shifts going on and startling things. And let's just accentuate the positive. And that's just me sharing my feelings. Like, you know, I'm into that. So let's take a look at the cards. Um, I had mentioned, just switching topics a little bit, I had mentioned that I was a little bit befuddled because I used the pendulum to find out if a special master would be appointed before Canon said they were going to go ahead and appoint a special master. My pendulum said there would be no special master. So then when I heard that there would be, then I was a, a little like what's up pendulum and um, I don't think there's gonna be a special master because the DOJ appealed that thankfully because Donald J Trump is dripping with crimes right now well I think he always has been and we we really haven't ever seen anything like it I mean, if you want to, like, compare, like, do, do an exercise in complete polar opposites, Donald Trump is on one side, 
and the queen is on the other, right? In terms of like quality life living, live, lived. What we're going to do right now is take a look at uh, the special master situation because that's really pending. Uh, the DOJ appealed it, basically said, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about in the nicest way. The most politest terms. They've been polite the whole way. I mean, you can't say that they haven't been. And uh, so we're going to find out what's going to happen with that because it is pending. So she needs to come back with, basically, never mind. Trump made me do it. <laughs> Like that. So we'll see what the cards say about the what she's going to come back with. And I, I do believe it's tomorrow. Right? Wait. I'm not sure. Because tomorrow's Saturday. I'm on, I'm on Thursday in my mind. She's going to feel, the judge is going to feel left out in the cold. Cannon. What if, <laughs> a lot of people in the comments are calling her the loose cannon which I just thought was hilarious. That one caught me off guard. Surprised I didn't say it first anyway, because I would say something like that. Uh, this is, she's really, this is, this is, this is uh, bad for Judge Cannon. She's just ruined, uh, well, she soiled her reputation, we'll put it that way. Um, I do feel like she's going to be able to uh, well, the DOJ gave her a graceful out. They basically said, they gave her an opportunity to reconsider and to change her mind and to be basically like, never mind, you know, like that. So she's feeling very much isolated, very much pinned down because she, you know, Trump coerced her to go, well, he set it up that way a long time ago. He's very conniving. It's, a, it's really like he, he, he does think ahead on those things. He doesn't think about consequences because he thinks he's, you know, indestructible, which, you know, based on what we've seen, it, it seems to be true. And above the law. So he did set her up. And she's, she's kind of, you know, pinned down with, you know, nowhere to turn. But I feel like the, DO, the DOJ gave her a way to gracefully get out of this. And let's take a look at the pendulum and see, is the, is the whole, is the investigation going to be able to move fully forward? It looks like yes. So I, I don't see a special master. I do trust the pendulum on that one. Meanwhile, back at Buckingham Palace, I'm sure you all heard King Charles speaking. I'm going to look into this more and talk about it more, but I think it's very significant that the Queen was this, you know, for 70 years reigned as this, you know, was seated at this great, as this great, um, you know, a representation of a, a matriarch. And us not having that to look to is, is going to be hard. It's going to be hard because the queen's been the queen for our whole entire lifetimes. We don't remember a time, even though she's not the queen of the United States, we got rid of that a long time ago <laughs> with the Revolutionary War. Even though it is going to affect us because we, we kind of need somebody to, a figurehead to hold the space of the, of the powerful divine feminine. We need that. Who's it going to be? Uh, I'm going to look at, because I, if you are viewing from England, my condolences, especially to England. I want to just look at Harry and Meghan. Oh, yeah. Tensions are running high. Not necessarily between Harry and Meghan, but 
People are curious about what's going to happen at the royal funeral. I'm not sure what the date is of that. I'm going to pull three cards on Harry and Meghan and the family. Somebody's very depressed. Um, well, obviously, they're going to the grandmother's funeral. Uh, but I'm asking about Harry and Megan, and there's a there's a, some, there's depression there. I, I'm thinking that it's Megan. I'm thinking that Megan is suffering from some some kind of depression. And actually, that makes sense because I know that she was experiencing that when she was at Buckingham Palace. So I do see that. Um, I I actually see that things will get better. The grandma is going to, um, there's going to be such an outpouring of love from the collective that I do see Harry and Meghan, even though I, I really feel like Meghan's struggling with depression. A lot's going on there. But, but the overwhelming feelings of love and support are going to actually help to heal them. To heal the rifts in the family. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Don't ever think that your positive thoughts and intentions, you know, don't make a difference. That light seemed kind of bright. Because they really do. And speaking of that, you know what I'm going to say. On Tuesdays, we have 20 on Tuesdays, where we meditate and we visualize a healed America. Uh, I'll get into all that in a minute. As far as the information, I'll put it in the description. All right. And the house, Prince Charles, I mean, I, I did it. It's kind of like when the year changes and you can't remember what's a new year. King Charles, that's going to take some adjusting. How's King Charles going to do? Honestly, when I heard what he said, how he addressed the world uh, today with the passing of his mother, and he mentioned his dear, dearly beloved wife, Camilla, and he never even hinted at Princess Diana, like as if she never existed. I didn't like that. And I think I'm not the only one that didn't like that. I think he could have said, the, and the mother of my children, you know, just, just talking a little bit about the history that they've been through. He could have said something. So how is uh, King Charles going to do? He looked good, he looked strong, he looked, um, obviously he, he's grieving, but he looked like he's prepared for the job, and it really is, you're just a figurehead now, it's not like he's a, he's the president, or, or something, or the prime minister, it's not like that. Okay, so Charles is going to have a rough time of it. King Charles is going to have a rough time of it. There will be people that are against what... Grief makes people act in strange ways. I feel like he's going to have to combat a lot of criticism. And what, I'm, I'm, what I mean is people that are upset that the Queen is dead. People, she was 96. I know it's sad, but, you know, we don't live forever, and we wouldn't want that. I swear. <laughs> anyway, so... So he, so, so King Charles, it's really hard to remember to say King Charles, King Charles, not Prince, is, uh, he's going to be, he's going to have to bear a lot of criticism. People will be mean. So it's going to be hard for him to deal with that first, but like everything, after a while things calm down and he settles in. But I see, I actually see King Charles keeping a very low profile, almost like his mother, where he's just there, but he doesn't get involved very much. And he's not, actually not supposed to get involved too much. He's going to be uh, passing his, you know, his projects, like working uh, to combat global climate change. You know, he's going to pass that on to William. Um, I actually feel like William is faring a little better than... Harry. Harry's going through a tough time. I'm kind of going back and forth across the pond tonight. 
Is there more about England? Well, they have a new prime minister. I didn't write her name down. I know what it is, but it escapes me for the second. But you don't have to tell me because I'll know. It's easy to find. Uh, I'm going to ask how she's going to do. We did get this question the other night. If you haven't checked it out yet, on Wednesday we always have the psychic and the sidekick and you have to go to Bridge Cape Ann to find that. I will post it on my community page, community page too. But somebody did ask about the new Prime Minister. And that was a day before. Yeah, that was a day before the Queen died. But I, I, I kind of didn't feel like anything, you know, monumentally amazing would be happen happening for the new Prime Minister. Except she did get the last photo with the Queen, which, I mean, that's kind of a good, that's kind of a cool thing to be the one who was last photographed with the Queen. So I, I think that that is a, let's ask the pendulum, is that kind of, is that like a good omen for her? Oh yeah, 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 I get that that's a really good omen for her, in the sense that, you know, subconsciously, psychologically, you know, people see that she, their beloved queen, the last picture of her, her public photograph is of her, you know, okaying the, the new prime minister. So that's a good look for the new prime minister. Plus it's a woman and that's a good look too, right? Two women who have, who are in positions of um, power. Okay, the Five of Pentacles. The For the new Prime Minister of England, the inflation is going to be a really big challenge for her. I don't think she has any clue how to deal with the economy. I know nothing about her. See, I can't even remember her name right now, but it's going to be in the news so much I will just find out in a few minutes. Refresh my memory what her name is. But I feel like the economy is really going to make it tough for her because it feels like you know we have joe biden right and joe biden has a lot of experience writing bills and legislature and you know looking over the economy and fixing economic problems but the prime minister of england that doesn't feel like she has any experience with the economy i mean neither did boris let's just be real right so i don't see an improvement there very much but i do see it's going to take her a while to get her sea legs, and the Six of Swords is, um, the Brits are not happy. They're sad about the Queen, and they're, they're a little bit angry about having not good leadership. Pray for England. They're having a rough time of it. But the Eight of Pentacles is, is, I keep on getting this, in time things will... You just got to kind of wait for things to unfold, you know, just to calm down. So, so the new prime minister is going to have a rough time. I mean, I keep on getting about that, that it's, it's particularly, and this is probably for other countries too, but this is going to be almost impossible for her to get a handle on the, um, the energy issue. So perhaps... I don't know for sure, but perhaps England is behind on their alternative alternative forms of energy, alternative to gas. I'll have to look that up. Okay. So Donald Trump is dripping with crimes, as I said earlier. And now, and Steve Bannon is going to jail. Thank God, glory, hallelujah, there is justice, I can't wait. I can't wait to know he's behind bars. Uh, there being... There, uh, how anybody could defend Donald J. Trump, I can't even wrap my mind around it. And how anybody can talk about, oh, maybe he's going to run for president. I can't even wrap my mind around it. I think you're with me on that craziness. So now they're under investigation for the Stop the Steal Pack. All the money that he stole. Well, the irony is not lost on me. We need... <laughs> they, I don't think that's what they called it, but it's like, oh, we... You need to send us money to stop the steal when it all 
when it all comes down to it, they're the ones doing the stealing. And if you haven't seen the ad that the Lincoln Project put out, I think it was today. Stunning. Stunningly accurate. And I did sense that there would be a time when the people that really worship Trump, not all of them obviously because there's a, cult, a lot of cult energy around the whole Trump thing. I did feel that people would, who've been following him, many, many, many people who've been following him and voted for him are going to, that's going to be it. When they find out that he was saying, you need to help us to stop the steal. It wasn't called that, but that was one of their slogans. When they realized that he stole their money, and a long time ago I saw people really turning on him, including, this was several months ago, including the Oath Keepers after the insurrection, because he said that he would grant them pardons and he couldn't. And uh, I, I feel people turning on him. I feel people angry at Trump. And if you look at that Lincoln ad that came out today, just look it up. You've probably seen it, but it's worth seeing again. People will be angry. So stop the steal, and, and he's the one that was stealing. And you know what? I, was, I saw a picture of one of his rallies. I think it was the last one. Just happened to see a video, and I saw... I saw a snapshot of Trump standing there out of the rally and people behind him. He always got he always has people behind him that I think get paid. And they're holding signs that say this this just struck me. They're holding signs that say save America. And I'm thinking that's a message for the Democrats, isn't it? Isn't that the message for us? See, if you flip it around, what was he saying on um on January 6th, that horrible, horrible, horrible speech that I I happened to see that morning. I had TV was on and I saw what he was doing and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe what he's saying on January 6th. And he kept saying, we need to take our country back. And that's what we have to do. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm talkative and I forgot what I was reading about. Oh, the death card's coming up. This is the end for Trump. This is the star card which represents the United States. We will win, but we will have a lot of damage. I mean, this is like beside the point of that he stole all the top secret sensitive documents that he stole. 11,000 pages, I believe the figure is. And and he's run out of uh, options in terms of how to get out of it this time. And, uh, and this is about, this is the end of him. He cannot, he's swimming in, like I said, he's dripping crimes. He's swimming in crimes. And speaking of that, I've been saying about Ron DeSantis that I feel Ron DeSantis, when I kept getting this image of Ron DeSantis just be, being, you know, crashed by waves and I felt like it was legal issues. And today it occurred to me that that was a message from my guides that Ron DeSantis is in over his head. They're all part of the same evil tribe. Greg Abbott listening to Beto O'Rourke on being interviewed and by somebody I think it's Lawrence yeah it was Lawrence, Lawrence O'Donnell I really out of all the news people my absolute favorite is Lawrence O'Donnell he's from the Boston area he's really smart he's 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 just he's my favorite I know we all have our favorites right should go down the list they're all MSNBC uh, anyway, <clears throat> so, so, so Beto was saying that at, after the shooting at Uvalde, instead of Governor Abbott going straight to Texas, you may have heard this, you may have heard Beto say this, instead of him 
dropping everything. Oh my God, there's been a mass shooting. There's another Sandy Hook happened in U Uvalde and I got to drop everything and go down and, and, and make sure I'm there with the people. Instead of that, you know what Greg Abbott did? He hopped on a plane and went to attend a fundraiser for him. Ted Cruz recently, because um, Governor Newsom had the wherewithal <clears throat> to avert a massive electricity grid, power grid shutdown, had the wherewithal to send everybody a text message that said, can you please not use electricity or power it down during these certain hours? And everybody did. And Ted Cruz on Fox tried to make it out like, oh, Gavin Newsom is trying to control people, and how dare they? People, we're here to help each other. They are looking so bad. <clears throat> I know I went around a little, you know, there, but, uh, but, but the main point is cruelty is the point. They're just making it really in your face. We don't care about you. We, there's no place, like Ron DeSantis, think of one place where you see Ron, Ron DeSantis going, I really care about you. They can't even fake compassion. They're really bad at it. They, you know, can you imagine Donald Trump being compassionate? Just speaking of the same breed of people. So, he's, so Ted Cruz is making fun of Gavin Newsom like, oh, why did he do that? Well, to save the freaking power grid from going down in the most excessive heat ever on record. These are really trying times, and I think that the universe is making it glaringly obvious to us that we need to save ourselves. In this country, and planetarily. I'm going to take a look at the, the documents, the um, top secret documents that got stolen. And I, I know, we can't think about it too much because we really get angry <laughs> that he's not locked up. But I do feel him being arrested. I do feel Donald Trump being arrested. I think with the Queen's death in the headlines, uh, that would be a good time. Because that's, you know, like yesterday, it was a little hard to get the other news yesterday because, of course, the passing of the Queen was first and foremost uh, in the news. So I'm going to look at, um, are they going to arrest Donald Trump? Is the FBI or whoever does the arresting going to arrest Donald Trump? I keep getting yes on that. Is it going to be in the month of September? No. Is it going to be in the month of October? So Donald Trump is going to be arrested in the month of October. Is it going to be the first week in October that he's arrested? Now, I did check this earlier and I got the same answers. So it, it has been confirmed. And full disclaimer, as all the psychics say, time is very hard to predict. I am getting October though. I feel pretty sure about October. So let's take a look at a few cards on that. Eventually, I'm going to uh, set it up so you can send me your questions. You could send them to my email, AnnetteDion7 at gmail.com. Because sometimes I feel like I maybe missed something that you really wanted to know about. So, this is about his arrest. He will be arrested. Sometimes, I, I've heard people say, my mom is one person that said this a while back, do you think he'll kill himself? And I, I said no, because narcissists don't do that. Um, anyway, so we, we do think, I mean, Hitler killed himself, but it was because he was, he had no place to turn. It's a dark topic. Uh, okay, so, okay, so, so Trump is like, still, <laughs> this is about his arrest. He's like, da, da, da. he's just being an idiot. He's just, he's really being an idiot. He doesn't have the wiring in his brain 
for I got caught committing a crime and now I'm in trouble. It's not in there. He has no frame of reference for that. He is clueless. He, you know, you kind of have, have to have a, a frame of reference for things in order to be able to understand what's going on when it's going on. You kind of do. No touchstone for that. Nada. Nothing. He has, he, it does, the thought doesn't even enter his mind in a real way that he could get arrested and thrown in prison. It's remarkable. All his negotiations are being stuck. It's really no negotiations going on anyway, but what I think I'm referring to, this is about Trump and his lawyers. He doesn't have money to pay lawyers. He has run out and his lawyers have incriminated themselves and they can be arrested and prosecuted also for lying to the Department, Department of Justice. I mean, as a little side note, I just cannot believe that we are in, <laughs> we're in a very bizarre place. I'm telling you, if we, you know, when we leave this earthly existence and we go to the other side, I, it, it's really, it's to the point where I, I feel like we would get over to the other side. Maybe, maybe this is how, how it will be. And we'll just be like, oh my God, what was that, God? <laughs> what was that? That was bizarro, you know, in the words of Jerry Garcia. What a long, strange trip it's been. Uh, DOJ is moving, the DOJ is lining it up and they're moving in. And Trump can't get the lawyers. And somebody's got a lot of inner resolve about the, I mean, I'm telling you, I mentioned the other night on Monday that I feel strategizing. Remember, I mean, like when, when the military, I'm not saying the military is going to go in and arrest Trump, I, but I remember when the military went in and got Osama bin Laden, they had to really strategize. And I really feel that the strategizing to that degree with, you know, we got to get this perfectly, exactly right, like with a lot of precision. That, that they're planning to arrest Donald Trump. And I, the fool card also indicates it will be, he will not expect it. It will be when he least expects it. The guides are saying it'll be, it's interesting. The guides are saying it will be, I'm not sure how this is gonna play out. When he, when he thinks he's gotten away with something, I, I mean, well, he thinks that anyway, but when, when he thinks he has dodged a bullet, metaphorically speaking, that's when they're gonna come in. I, now I'm fascinated. I, I'm telling you, we live in interesting times. We live in scary times and we live in interesting times. Now, I sort of went off the track because I was gonna look at the top secret documents. So let's do that now. Um, just as far as, uh, you know, really visualize us being safe because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of leaked secrets out there that he sold and gave away. A lot. And I always say, if it's any consolation, we did make it through January 6th, and the way that their plans were for January 6th, it should have worked, uh, except for the legions of angels, you know, but for the legions of angels, they came, came in and saved our country. And I mean that quite literally we wouldn't be having Donald Trump under investigations right now. We would have Donald Trump um, getting like Pelosi and Schumer and uh, all these public servants arrested and thrown in jail. So anyway, when you lose perspective and you get really nervous, just, just see what we've made it through. Um, Sunday is 9-11 and at Church of Spirituality, just as a side note, every Sunday, one Eastern time, uh, we have Church of Spirituality. Uh, I am going to have a special service for 9-11. Uh, I'll be talking about that. So, we made it through that. We made it through January 6th. I don't, you know, I guess we could be afraid our luck is going to run out, but I don't really get that. So, 
Um, I, I, when I think about the secrets, I think two countries. I think Saudi Arabia and I think Russia. So I'm going to pull three cards to get more insight on what level of danger that we are in. The guy just said he's still on the phone. He's still. They need to shut him down. I always see him on the phone. When I tune into Trump, he's always on the phone. He's constantly doing deals. It's it's like it's like an OCD. If it makes you feel better, he has a miserable life. I mean, if it makes you feel better that he's not like, you know, just having a, a lovely time, he's not having a lovely time. He's done irreparable harm to this country. I mean, maybe over time we can repair the damage, but it's going to take a long time. So, well, you know, this card, the Four of Cups, is we're missing the opportunity to, to, to shut him down, and we really need to do something about that. I, I do, and I've been seeing this consistently, and we can pray it away, but... What I see is that there there will be some some implications. Uh, there will be some ramifications for what he has done. I do feel like the world coming together now that Biden is president. It's like it's not Biden's fault, obviously. Now that he's president, the world will help us. Our allies will help us, but not the way they used to. Because our allies real, realize that, that they're, they're, they're aware that we have to, you know, know that we're all in this together because we live in the nuclear age. So, we're at risk. I see, I see uh, unsettledness overseas with our representatives. Um, I think Blinken is in Ukraine right now. I don't... I don't feel that he's in danger, but of course they always have to watch their backs. I'm feeling something in a, like a third world country, a problem in a third world country with some of our diplomats. So just, you know, keep praying because we, what I say to people that get readings is it's a, it's a good thing to get a reading because if there's something that's, you know, a little untoward in their reading, you can, you can change it. You can change the trajectory or you can, you can lessen the impact. So pray that, that all of our representatives overseas are safe. Oh, the hangman came out. Just flipped right up. <laughs> and actually, that's funny because I was just shuffling and the way it just flipped itself over. This really does represent the surrender card. Like I was just saying, pray for their safety and this card flipped up. And this card very often represents give it to the higher power. It's a lot. I know it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Uh, the queen dying is going to shift a lot of things, uh, and I don't mean I don't mean it's going to be bad. I just mean that we all need, even with clients. Sometimes I say, if they had a bad upbringing or bad a bad mother or something, I just say, imagine a, imagine a, a spiritual, you know. A spiritual nice mother an imaginary mother and for 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 so many people the queen with her demeanor and her her smile and her, her wit and she was always she always you know when she came into the public looked you know happy it it, it was reassuring it was reassuring to people and to not have her as a figurehead anymore uh, it's tough. We do really have to, I'm, I'm going to take a look at, um, I, it's funny because I was just thinking of Lady Diana and then I thought, well, I wonder what's going on because I know it's hard to access people when they just cross, except Ivana Trump, Trump wasn't hard to access. There I go, going back and forth across the pond again. Uh, but I feel Lady Diana and I feel like, you know, somebody, I think somebody had asked if she had, if Lady Di, a couple weeks ago, had a message for us, and, it, and I did get a message, and it was, keep the love going. And with Elizabeth, it's, I feel like, with her, I mean, I just feel like a message from her soul to the, re to the whole world is to, to, to act with dignity. 
She she represented have being dignified. And boy, could we use a lot of that. We could really use a lot of that, don't you think? Um Okay. Now, I forgot what the question was, but I have an interesting answer. <clears throat> we'll be okay. We'll be okay, but there's some disruption coming. <clears throat> let me ask. Let me ask, because I just pulled up the tower card. Let me ask. I know at the end of the reading, uh, we pulled a card for the collective, a few cards at the end last on Wednesday on Bridge Cape Ann and at the end I said that we were gonna have some bad bad news I didn't know what it was about but anyway so now I have to look at what is this about is this an attack on American soil it's not an attack on American soil is this disruption um disruption because of Trump no that's not what this is okay Because I'm getting the tower card, which means that there's there's a big shift coming. And then there's this, which has to do with stalled, things being stalled. Does this have to do with Trump throwing another wrench in the works with the DOJ? No. I'll get to the bottom of it, don't worry. I have a lot of experience. <laughs> These three cards are challenging. This is what's This is what's coming up. For us, but I didn't have a specific question that time, unless I forgot it, which I probably did. Is is this about the United States? Yeah. Okay. Is this about a violent event? It's saying no. Okay. Is this about the GOP? I'll just show you the cards again. In case any of you read cards. I know some of you do. Is this about the... Does this have to do with the GOP? Does this have to do with something to do with the GOP? It has to do with the Republicans. That's interesting. Well, let's take a look at some more cards. Maybe we can get some more, more specific. So we have three... A little bit tumultuous cards about um, the, about the GOP. But the tower card means disruption. And we have a full moon tomorrow night. Tomorrow in Pisces. I don't know what time. I have to look. Uh, yeah, America, this is, the, Democrats, the Democrats are going... That actually wasn't a bad... Those cards looked a little disastrous. But it, it's not... It's not... It, this is... It's... For democracy. Democracy is being shaken up. The GOP is being shaken up. They have run out of things to say. So they're saying stupid stuff. They have no platform to run on. This is the Empress of the United States. The January 6th committee hearings are coming back. They haven't given us a date yet. And here's the Six of Pentacles. The United States of America is going to do an about face. It's going to do an, an about face. We have a lot gosh when you look at it and Joe Biden's out there you know talking truth speaking truth to fake power we got to keep the faith people yeah because things are turning around and I heard too that Michigan is now putting abortion on the ballot the abortion ban on the ballot um, North Carolina needs a little help right now so we're gonna help them to get uh, a good Democrat in office. I don't have the name off the top of my head. It's a lot to keep track of. That's why we have grassroots of democracy. Grassroots of democracy at gmail.com. Just type AYE in the subject line and you will receive Zoom invites to our meetings. We have to do everything that we can. So um, that looked really actually positive. I'm going to pick three more cards about these three cards are going to be about the midterms. If you've been slacking all summer, these two months are critically important. What I know for sure, from my psychic fact perspective, 
is that Democrats will win and Republicans won't let them take office. I don't mean they'll succeed at that, but that is their MO. Democrats will win. In numbers, what is Glenn, Glenn Kirshner says, too big to rig and too real to steal. Democrats will win in the midterms and the Republicans will fight it. I don't mean violently, but they'll just fight it because they've got all these, you know, gerrymandering, mandarin, and they've got all this stuff in place to overthrow our free and fair elections. Let's see what's going to happen with that. They're going to be dishing it out. The Republicans are going to be dishing out the, the, the awful, awful, awful. They're lazy, you know. I just want you to know they're lazy. The Republicans are lazy. They're not doing anything for the American people. They just want power at all costs. And they learned that from Trump, but they had they were pretty pretty ingrained in their nefarious ways before Trump. Or they wouldn't be doing this. That it was already in there. He just brought the ugly ugliness out to the surface, up to the surface. Yeah, this is so be be ready people. The Republicans have it. Now we have, we have the strength but the Republicans have it set up for the elections not to work for the Democrats. But we have a lot of things in the works right now that are contingency plans, and we need more of that, for when the Republicans do this. And a long time ago, there's a strength card. This is America. This is the strength of our democracy. Do not go back to sleep. It's really important to stay woke. Stay woke. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And like the Midas touch says, um, not ashamed to be a Democrat or something, something like that. I, I do really see that the Republicans are going to, they're going to, they're going to wreak havoc, but they're doing that now. So the Democrats will win. But the Republicans will attempt to not let Democrats win. You heard it here. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, sorry, I was just looking at a, a message from Corey. I believe that he sh he's premiering on Bridge Cape Inn. I think he's premiering the show that we did yesterday morning on a schooner on a big uh, vessel. Not out at sea, but we were we were docked. Okay. I'm going to leave you with a full moon card. And I'll, if something big happens, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, hopefully everything's going to be calm. Um, please join us on Sunday. It's September 11th, and last year I did a service that had that was about, you know, healing, uh, on September 11th and and all that, and we, just a remembrance. Um, and but this year it's actually on the day. Sunday is September 11th, so please join us at Church of Spirituality. Don't let the word church scare you. It just means fellowship. I'm going to pick three cards for this full moon in Pisces. Full moon in Pisces would mean. It's a really good time for uh, spiritual, gosh, it's a great time to meditate. I may, I may start Church of Spirituality early so we can do a little meditation. I'll let you know. I'll post it on my page. So check in a little earlier than one if you normally come, like 10, 15 minutes earlier. So I'm going to pick three cards for the energy of the weekend. I actually feel pretty positive about the weekend. Um, when a big, uh, figure, I can't remember a bigger figure than, uh, Queen Elizabeth dying, because she had such a, a dynasty, really, for 70 years. Uh, but when a big event like that happens, it does bring people together. And speaking of 9-11, that happened on 9-11, when the rest of the world loved America, and most of the rest of the world, and then people rallied. They, they got together in love and healing, so I do feel that. So this weekend, we're going to see, well, a lot about, about the death of, um, of the Queen. 
over the weekend. A lot of people are going to be processing that. There's a lot of sadness. There's a real lot of sadness. It's not about her per se. It's about the end of an era. It's like, you know, when, when people die and there are funerals, the funeral is not for the person that died. It's for the, the people left behind. Recognizing, you know, this is, this is finite. Well, we go on forever, but you know what I mean. Um, so we'll be, we'll be kind of, you know, processing that. And the Three of Wands is, it's, it's a time of, of building anew. Which is usually the Three of Pentacles, but I kind of feel like the Three of Wands means this is new, commu new ways of communicating. New, this is, this is interesting. It's the, we're coming to the end of the horribleness. We are, and I'm not just referring to the Queen's death, I, I, that's not what I mean. I mean, the, this, this means a, a massive transformation and shift and change. But it's in the midst of a lot of sadness and a lot of having to say goodbye. It also represents the end of Trump. Because I already did get that about him. It, rep, it represents the end of that evil. Visualize it, visualize it, and much better communication everywhere much better communication like the Democrats are getting the message out much better messaging you're gonna see coming up pretty soon that it's a no-brainer that people need to vote for democracy so on that note if you'd like to book a reading I'm just gonna tell you to book it with my personal email Annette Dion 7 at gmail.com it's okay if you send it to the other but I'm just gonna say that for now, AnnetteDion7 at gmail.com if you'd like to book a reading with me. I have plenty of time for some reason. I don't know. My guides want me to just relax or something. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, just get in touch with me to get a reading. Um, I have a, I'm, I'm planning to have a pendulum class. Haven't decided on the date yet, so I just keep tuning in and I'll let you know. Uh, and grassroots of democracy please join us we need all the help we can get we meet on thursday nights for our discussion group and on saturday we get work done so if you've already signed up you do get the invites grassroots of democracy at gmail.com type a y e in the subject line and um there's probably more and i always forget to tell you more oh subscribe please subscribe please subscribe i remembered to say it and hit the thumbs up because that really helps my channel Thank you. Namaste. See you soon.